Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Contrary to what some people believe, I haven't been abducted by aliens, I'm not dead and I haven't been banned off YouTube. I've simply been on holiday for a couple of weeks with my wife. That's why that wasn't a nightcap last weekend. Uh, we had a 11 nights in Rhodes, uh, Greece. It was absolutely fantastic. A real nice break. I had intended to go to um, America to the bash, the YouTube bash, but with personal reasons at home, I couldn't book the flights on the chance that I couldn't get. So this was a last minute holiday, which were booked, uh, just mainly a break for them, but also a break for me, and uh, it really was enjoyable. I got quite a lot of film, but I wasn't much really of any like engineering sort of thing, but I'll probably put one or two little clips in each week in the nightcaps just to, to break things up. The first thing I want to do is a draw for the little Banggood DTI indicator. I've still got two of these. I'm determined to give the bastard things away. Right, let's have a look. Quite a few names came in when I've been on holiday. There's a one. There's two. We're well, going to use this one. The name I've got here is Don Dixon. Right, Don. All you need to do, send me an email with your address. I'll get that posted off to you as soon as possible. I'm going to do another giveaway. This giveaway is going to be for the other Banggood DTI that's never been claimed. That's it there. The metric DTI, I did a review on them. My friend Bob took one apart and put it back together. There's nothing the matter with them. As usual, if you're a chance of winning that, all you have to do is send me an email. In your email, I just need your name, your full name, like John Mills, not just John. That's my email address up there. Your name goes in the bucket. If it's drawn out, I'll post it off to you. Your name stays in the bucket, so you only need to send your name in once. I've got a nice straightforward machining job to do. I'm going to make a shaft like that. You can see somebody's trying to repair it by welding it up. Bearing goes on there. Each end in a six mil key weight to put into it. The lad supplied a bit of material. This is the stuff he supplied. AN19T. For the machine, no problem at all. So we'll go about making that. I'm not quite sure which way I'm going to do it yet. I might end up making it, or at least machine it between centers because obviously each end has got to be parallel to each other. That's quite important. We'll cut up in a bottle then to get a centre drilled and then go from there. Material. Quite tough, but it, it is machining all right. the piece cutting off at 209 so we'll cut 210 and then use a little bit to, to face it with I've got the piece of bottle length, I could 
put it back on the collar chuck, machine one end, turn it around and do the other end and it will be pretty good. But to get both ends exactly the same in parallel, it needs to go between centers like that. Machine that end, turn it over, machine that end. I haven't got a catch plate for this lathe, uh, so I'm going to mount a face plate onto here just to use that as a driving plate to make sure it's nice and clean. As an adapter that goes into here, it takes a, a centre, that goes into there. And I've got a centre here which is made out of an old most tape or drill, that goes into there. And all I'll do, I'll just take a very light cut across there just to make sure that, that point is absolutely spot on in the middle. A 60 degree centre so you take a, a 30 degree cut of it just to, just to throw it up just to make sure it is absolutely dead on in the centre Okay, so this is uh, the basic setup. You've got a centre on there which is called a dead centre or a soft centre. This centre here is called a live centre or a rotating centre. So it's mounted between centres like that. We'll put a driving dog on there to drive it. So you run it up like that, machine one end, and then quite simply turn it round, machine the other end. And it means that both those ends have got to be parallel to each other. It's a bit of quality boy, you can see it's running true. It's not 100% true, but it's very, very near. So basically that's the, the drive set up. You've got to be aware that this is all spinning around. You don't want to get yourself fastening them on all that. You're working up at this end so you've got to keep away from that. That's quite a bit to come off this shaft so I'm just going to have a little bit of clear on with speeds and feeds and see what sort of finish I can achieve. And that looks, that looks very nice actually. Not wanting to break the chair, the chips are breaking, so that's all right. Right, it's time to do some measuring, see what we're going to take the shaft down to. Right, I've put a mark on there, that's a 55 mil, in the total length of the shaft, or at least the length of the, the part that needs to be reduced in diameter, is 55.5. So I've got half a mil to play with. I'm just going to speed that, that fear it up a little bit so I can get to break those chips better. 
see a nose attempt to experiment with it. That's better. Instead of putting horrible curly chips out, it's breaking the chips nicely and it's also putting a much much better finish on. Certainly happy with that. That's nice. We'll settle for that. I put the drive dog on the other end and you can see I'll put a little bit of aluminium scrap there just to just stop the dog from biting into it. and that's the, the nave part done and then they've got the carriers to cut. Now dead on 20 mil. Same size all the way down. It's slightly warm, so I'll let it cool down now. I'm trying to bear it on, and if it needs any more off, it'll be an emery tape job, just a very, very fine polish on there. So hopefully, when that cools down, it'll be a funny as hair under, under 20 in the barrel will go on. We've got that size, that end without having to use any tape the same might need a little polish literally a funny head taken off there I'm going to use any tape to do this a lot of people frown about using any tape on the lathe what you must make sure you do is either use a little piece a short bit that can't possibly wrap round or use a long piece like that and you keep your hands well away from it and you just hold it in your finger and so many chance that's exactly what I'm going to do No jewelry, no long sleeves. Fingers are well away from it. This will not take much. Zero one under twenty mil there. And that bearing would knock on there, it would press on, but I'll have a push slide and fit on the original one, so we need a little bit more taken off it.
that's getting better. That is a little bit of temperature on there, let that cool down, try it again and I'm pretty sure that will slide on there very nicely. Right, this is cool down now, we'll see what sort of fit we've got on the bearing. And that's nice. That's actually, it's better than the other end, that's pretty good that. John. <laughs> Fast that thing. Right, it does go on, it does go off, so it's, we'll settle with that. When I came back off holiday, there was some parcel spots at work, uh, some bad good stuff that I'm going to do reviews on. There's a set of cobalt drills there with a very strange grind on them, I've got them to review. There's also a set of rotary burrs, I use these quite a lot for aluminium before I weld it. There's a set of slip gauges, set of metric slip gauges. They look nice in a nice box. I'll have a go with them. I'll show you how they're used, what you actually do with them. Um, I don't know what the quality rate, we'll have a look and see. Some people say I shouldn't be doing bang good tool reviews. I don't see why not. If the gear's shite, I'll see it's shite. If it's not, somebody can get a, a decent buy. At least you can see what they're like before you buy them. Plus, I get them for free, and I do get a little bit of kickback off Banggood, which helps us buy more tools and more cameras and make better videos, hopefully.